plans for my crazy day. My packed commute, all those unread emails in my inbox. But I'm getting stronger, faster, and pushing myself further every day. I don't care if I'm not like everyone else. This punching bag is the best way to end my day. <laughs> Fearless is knowing yoga isn't your style. That's the power of the Blue Cross and Blue Shield Federal Employee Program. Learn more about our healthy benefits at fepblue.org slash get more. Welcome to the war room. We got Ted, Kim, Jimmy, PJ, B. Austin, the hot block commander. We want to hear the one or two hour show to keep the brain running with the premise of talk sports on a national level. Roll with the topic, sort of like the rubber. When it's game time, they like the Fab Five doing prime time. Sports conglomerates speak their minds a little bit. For sports medicine and sports veterans and great. The 4 for 26, so the war in Kuwait. It's the war room with five nights at the round table. Five silly guys, diversified and educated. Yo, 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 it is I, says he, and all that agree are more than three, because they're R.I.P. to Easy e With that being said, what's up, family? You're once Amen. again live in the War Room, brought to you by War Room Sports on the War Room Sports Podcast Network. I'm one of your hosts, Jimmy the Blueprint, and I'm at the round table with my brother, B. Austin, and Dev Mack. Welcome yo, yo. to the best two hours in sports talk. We got a little bit of everything, so keep it locked right here. You know what I mean? If you want to get into the conversation, here's what you do. Go to the JW Philly Realty chat room. That's at blogtalkradio.com slash the war room. Or hit us up on Facebook or Twitter. Both of those are at war room sports. You can also call us directly in about 30 minutes. We're going to open up the digital extreme technology hotline. That number is 323-410-0012. Now listen, during the week when we're not live on the air, be sure to check out the war room sports podcast network. Besides our own podcast, which is this show, The Worm, of course. You can also listen to shows such as The Broad Street Line with Roy and Chris, Tissue and a Tape Pop Show with Phil Maddock and Survive, Join Appetit with the Burtons, On the Couch with the Wilsons, After Further Review with the Mayor's Back, and much, much more. Just go to warmsports.com. You'll see at the top, you'll see a podcast network tab. You click on that, and you can get all the shows, or you can just go right to our mobile app. And there's a network tab directly on our mobile which will take you to get all of our shows that are on the podcast network. Yo, Beesh. what's popping this week, gentlemen? What up, what up? Yo. Yo, man, shout out to the young legend. He get more yams than most of you dudes get air, and that's a fact. <laughs> fact, though. I'm, uh, yeah. I, what's the title of our, of our today's episode? The Freaks Come Out Every Night because we're talking about you know, this era we in in the NBA with all the freaks. Yeah. Yeah, man. I'm here. I got a freak. Yo, nature. man. <laughs> yo, yo. Yo. All I'm a, young all legend. I'm a say, man, young legend. All I'm going to say is, man, I, 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 pray, I, pray to, I pray to every known guy there is that our uh, group chats never go public. Um, cause, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, yo. Yo, man, I'm out. talking about the locker room, man. Everything the locker room. Everything we value, room, everything we hate. Yo, everybody we value, everybody we Every- hate. <laughs> man. Yo, Yo so it's, it's, it's been a crazy week, man. Uh, basketball is in, in full effect. Uh, the NFL is, you know, at, a, at a, almost at a, well, a spot as a midway point, this, right? A couple weeks away from the midway point. Yeah, um, after this week, it'll be the midway. Yeah, so well, NFL, uh, we got the World Series going on, you know what I mean? That puck yes, dropped there, already, so it's, it's – it's uh, it's pretty much a uh, sports is in full effect, man. You know, so we try to it's still basically, on the sports talk. basically, it's popping. Pop yeah, yeah, yeah. We we Shut need a good boxing day. match right now, man. We need a boxing match to come in the middle of all this to like set it off right now. That's what we need oh. right now. What you we mean? Had of, we had we had one of them. versus <laughs> Floyd. So we need yeah. a, we need a boxing. But we had one after that though, be awesome. That was a pretty good bout, although I disagree with the scoring. But yeah, that was we a good had fight. one this weekend. We just can't talk about that, you know, on the air. But. <laughs> Yo, that wasn't a yo, boxing match. Yo, yo, yo I'm chilling right now. Listen, man, with that being said, man, yeah, you got, got a lot of topics to talk about. Yeah, you got a lot of topics to talk Yo, y'all drawing and, and, and Dev going too far right now, man. So, I, you know what I mean? Usually, if you hear me, this is Jimmy speaking. If you hear me say know, somebody right? going too far, you know it's going too far. 
You know what I mean? All I got, all, all, all I got to say is oh, it ain't curry chicken. No, nah, man, yo, no, nah, yeah, like, yo, like, yeah. you can't even get that bar off right now, man. Chill, man. With peace in the streets, man. Listen, it's time peace to, in the street, to talk peace. about. <laughs> yo, I can't even let you get that bar off, man. Like you, you gotta, you gotta yeah, chill yeah. with that, man. Yeah, I mean, you gotta definitely chill with that, man. Cause we got a lot to get to, man. We got uh, two hours, you know. Um, we only come to you once a week, but you can listen at any time. But it's just a lot to get to, so we might as well start, man. Talk about everything that happened this week uh, while you were on the run. And for those who don't know, while you were on the grind is brought to you by Direct TV. If you like a better TV experience than cable has to offer, here's what you got to do. You got to go to Direct TV. You got to get stuff right there. Because what will happen is you get a better TV experience, and it has all sorts of sports packages. Um, every sport we just mentioned that's going on, as well as uh, fights when they come up, you get them right there. So that is directtv.com, and uh, make sure you go there and, uh, you know, take a look at that. But uh, it's time to talk about this stuff. Gentlemen, listen, I want to see what you guys think about this. Um, the Cowboys – uh, released Demontre Moore. Um, he was one of the guys, one of the only Cowboys who raised his fist on a national anthem. They released him and said it has nothing to do with that. But uh, rum, it doesn't fit the narrative that a lot of us are trying to carry. So, like, you know, I ain't trying to hear that. But uh, <laughs> what you guys think about it? Though? I mean, it's very, I don't, very. I don't. Yo, go ahead, B. I'm sorry. Fish, fishy, fishy. I don't know enough about his performance as a player to stand up for him in this situation because who's to say that he wasn't trash and just a hair's length above a practice squad player? I don't know. I just don't know. So I don't want to jump to conclusion, although that answer doesn't fit my personal narrative and my personal war against white supremacy. I mean, it doesn't, but I just don't know if I keep it a million. Well, for for me, you, you know, I don't like to um, jump to conclusions either. Get that in there. Um, but uh, yeah, this this just seems way too, as you said, fishy, fishy. Because I mean, come on, we all know the threats that Jerry Jones has been laying down for the past month about anybody who quote unquote disrespects the flag. And it would just – two people did this on the Cowboys. So it would be – it's just real ironic to me that one of the two people happened to be the the 53rd man on the team because the reason he was cut is because their place kicker, Dan Bailey, injured his groin. So they had to make room for a temporary replacement, so they had to release somebody. Ironically, it was one of the two guys who were doing that. So, yeah, to me, unless – you know, when Dan Bailey comes back, they re-sign this guy. You know, then it might not be as fishy. But for now, with all the threats that Jerry Jones has been laying down for the past month, I, I'm 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 not going for it either. <laughs> yo, shout out to our brother mm. Hank. Hank. Hank said in our group chat, he was like, "Yo, if Jerry really did do this. Jerry would have claimed this body, and he ain't claiming this body." Um, yeah, he, he <laughs> might have been Jerry Isis with his. Uh, he he probably. I mean, but but you have to think about the stuff that's gone down in the past few weeks after Jerry was laying those threats down. They had the team meeting where he talked to his team. They had the owners meeting where nobody from the Cowboys showed up. He got accosted in the hotel about what people were really protesting for. And, you know, the, the guy was holding up a sign and letting him know that he's dead wrong. So it could be a situation where he still thinks in the back of his mind, like, I'm not going for this, but he might be at a place where, you know, he's not going to claim it like ISIS. Like, I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but ISIS oh, man. is fishy, in fishy. My, in my, in my, ISIS, ISIS in is claiming mind, stuff, but they ain't got I'm no so, business claiming because it'd be like, it'd be like a robbery at 7-Eleven on 2nd Street, and ISIS yeah, would be like, yo, yeah, yeah. They, don't, they, don't do, they don't do 80, they don't lay down 80% of the crime game that they claim. They 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 be fronting. They be fronting. Um, yeah, but, they, but the I, 20%. I, Jerry ain't copping to this. It is it, bad. Oh yeah, twenty yeah. percent is bad. I'm I'm so, in my mind and heart, I wish beyond hope that the Dallas Cowboy quarterback wasn't really painted in whiteface. I wish that he would throw his fist up. I wish that the amoral savage that is their starting running back 
would throw his fist up. I wish that the house Negro Des Bryant would throw his fist up, but unfortunately, it is what it is. Yeah. Yo, man. Shout, shout out, shout out, shout out to uh, the old head Rob Parker, man. Um, because Des Bryant be taking pain. Yo, <laughs> yo. I got, Rob Park got this thing he be saying on TV. He be like, yo, such and such take coon payments. When cats are <laughs> is, they, when cats is getting their check, and so because yo, of the check, they don't stand shout up. Out he to straight call them coon. <laughs> he straight call them coon payments. But, um, yo, we had Rob on a long time, man. Yeah, we got to call Rob him. On, just so I can hear him say coon payments one time on our show. But anyway, uh, <laughs> I'm going to take this approach with this whole story, man. I need more information, man. I can't, I can't say that it's not um, – this, this is what they do to us. I need more information before I can, you know, um, make a decision of whether I had anything to do with it or not. You know, uh, I'm not stupid. You know, I do believe in conspiracies. Everybody knows. But I just need more information, and, and we're going to leave it at that, man. You should have claimed the body. Don't be a coward. You know what I mean? Claim that body if that's what it is. Anyway, uh, shout out to Casey another, Mack in the World Room Sports Game Time Group. He said it ain't fishy. It's the same thing they did with Lucky Whitehead. Embarrassing. Yo, boy had a, a name made. It's to be your a, team. Athlete. You root for him. Well, that's why he said yeah. it's embarrassing. He's embarrassed by it. It's cool though. When one team piss you off, you just go to the other. Anyway, listen, man. Um, <laughs> former NBA. Com- David Stern. He now thinks that medical Mary Jane should be removed from the NBA's ban list um, after he spent some time with the Narcotta, uh, you know, for, for for some some issues that he had. Um, he now thinks it should be removed. What do you guys think about him even bringing this up or, or making the news for this? Like, you know. Um. First of all, I met David Stern. And he looked like he was high at the time, so I could see him being an advocate. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's one of those things. I mean, he's the former commissioner, so what he says might hold some weight. And I did hear Adam Silver say that they were going to look more into the situation. So if the players have somebody on their side, like the former commissioner, then it could bode well for, you know, getting it legalized in the, in the NBA. But we'll Man, he, the he NBA could also players just be saying the ones that need what he's supposed to be saying because – yeah, it's the NFL man. players that really need it, though. Yeah, if the NFL, yeah, them dudes, I think David Stern is going ahead and not only partaking, but he's invested uh, in a farm, in a in a, Yo, I need in think a about farming that. operation. Well, you know, when he said oh, it, yeah. he, was, so he was being interviewed by um, Al Harrington, who is an investor. Al Harrington in, invests. I knew Al so, Harrington was. David mm-hmm. Stern probably That's got some equity yeah. somewhere. Good point, B. Austin, because you yeah, got to check that. Um, dude, dude's being a I, I, I have a huge issue with the whole money, with the whole narcotics enforcement culture in this country because there's a whole lot of gentlemen who are doing a whole lot of time for nonviolent crimes involving mar- marijuana, and now you have a lot of a lot of you have a lot of faces who certainly are not from the African American or even Hispanic community who are participating in the in the efforts to legalize, who are capitalizing. Marijuana is now a billion dollar revenue generator for the United States government and almost a, a hundred billion dollar revenue generator for corporate America. So it's like People are still like you can't claim it as a class one narcotic. You can't claim it as something that's so evil when now you're all about educating the people and the community, the traditional community who villainized it are the ones that are capitalizing on it and making it, you know, a casual recreational or medicinal uh, implement. So I, I, yeah, it's uncomfortable for me talking. Uh, about it without bringing that up, like that—that's bad taste. Bad taste in the mouth. No, I mean that—that's awesome. a great point. Because I, I found it interesting. Like you know, you see on some of the um, the national news, we have like these different stories about the women who smoke marijuana for pain and how it's such a good thing. But we know there's brothers and sisters who are sitting for, like you said, non on the fence. Yo, and 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 Jim, it always looks like these Martha Stewart type. Oh, she's a, exactly. a homemaker in a five hundred thousand dollar house in her kitchen, four kids, white picket fence, 
you know, Volvo, Turag in the driveway. It's always that is the image <laughs> that is pushed to us. Like, yeah, I, I can't, man. Yeah. Yo, I mean, because cause we yeah, know that, man. Like, it, and depending upon what state you're in, yo, there's cats, there's cats right now who are literally doing 30 years for nonviolent offenses of just moving bud. Like, literally. You know I, mean, I mean, but we know how things change, especially when money gets involved and and, and yeah. not even always, you know, about the money. I mean, look at the crack epidemic. You know, everybody in the, you know, in the crack era was criminalized now that it's opioids and it's a different type of person doing these drugs. Now it's a it's a it's an epidemic where the we government need, has to step in and help, help the people. Right. Do you need help? Yeah. We're worrying about. I mean, listen, they've they're got not a, tossing everybody they've got a in jail. Disease. They've listen, got a man. disease. You're right. You're absolutely right about that. The face of opioids is, is kind of changed, and, and and now it's a it's a disease and has to be treated. Um, but is like you know is becoming mainstream to the point where David. You. He really doesn't have I hear talking wild because it's all on Adam's plate now. Um, you know, what, like I... what? Yo, Andrew Toe, listen, man, I command you to leave my brother Jimmy alone. I was about to say, was it just me? Was it Jimmy Lee? No. Nah. <laughs> oh, Joe got me. <laughs> Yo, Toe is <laughs> he just, Andrew Toe. I started to get my alternative uh, equipment ready. Like I'm like, maybe it's me. <laughs> yeah, Jim was just gone. No, Yo. it ain't you. Yo, <laughs> no, what it is? You left. Yo, as soon as I start, you left the show. That black power stuff. Ah! Every time I do it. Yo, whatever you just yeah. said, no one heard. I heard something about our said. our talk. All right, look, man, yo, yeah, Colin it, Kaepernick. Colin Kaepernick um, reportedly lands a million-dollar book deal in the midst of all this crap. Um, they said he signed a, a book deal with Random House worth more than a million. Uh, what are your thoughts on that, B. Austin? I mean, it, it, I mean, this is something to me. You, you saw this coming. You know, at some point, yeah. you know, he was going to yeah, put yeah. his story down to paper. Wait and, till, and wait till the movie. It. Wait till the movie hit. Yo, when mm-hmm. the movie hits, woo! Um, <laughs> I think there's two perspectives to look at this. Um, and initially, I was I was leaning, I was starting to lean towards the, damn, my man Colin Cap is selling out a little bit and capitalizing on the situation. Then I thought to myself, what better way to stay in the public eye? than telling your story, than publishing it? What better way than to create art and media around what is going on because art imitates life? And why is it that we have such an issue with artists and content creators turning a profit? We don't have a problem with the distribution of content and those that decide what it is that America views. So I don't have a problem with him you know, maximizing his position and situation. To me, it doesn't water down his message. It doesn't cause or create a selling out. He's still you for the people. Activists ain't got to be poor. And, and, huh? Yeah, <laughs> activists ain't got to be poor. Artists either. So, yeah, I don't mind. I, I look at I it um, good. Well, you know, he's probably going to give half the money away anyway. Yo, I don't, I don't know if I should even say anything about this because every time I try to say something on, on the Black Power tip, I get a my, my mic muted. But anyway, um, I think this is an amazing thing. I can't wait for the book. I'm probably going to get the audio version, the physical version, and the Kindle version. I'm all about supporting Cat. And not to compare him to anyone, but the single greatest book I can say that probably changed my life was the, read, um, the autobiography of Malcolm X. And I say that to say this. I'm not comparing Cap to I'm not comparing Cap to him at all. I don't want anyone to take it that way. But what I'm saying is that was probably the first book I read that like opened up my eyes. I felt like someone was talking directly to me because of the experiences that he shared 
and um, just his point of view and also his ability to get new information and kind of just like change his perspective, right? So the, the thing about Cap, which is interesting to me, is anyone who's an attractor of Cap, they always try to bring up his past or mm-hmm. where we see that saying these things before. So I think this book will give him an opportunity to talk about whatever happened in his life to kind of open his eyes and make him want to do better, make him want to become an activist, make him want to do what's right. Um, because he really can change, change lives with this book. That you can't change. He can change li- yeah, yeah he, he can change lives with this book. So the same way I felt when I read the Malcolm book, I know there's going to be a young cat out there who's going to recap in his book because he's relevant, because he's, you know, in the media. And he may share something that can, you know, and, and everyone knows I love books anyway. So to me, this is an amazing thing. He's, I don't look at it as, so, as him, like, you so, know, so Jimmy, profiting off of this. What you're, saying, uh-huh. what you're saying is he's leveraging the attention, which is the new, you know, the new tradable commodity, the attention. He's leveraging it for a positive. Absolutely. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, everyone has written a book. I, I, I don't care, like, what you fought for, whether you fought for freedom, you fought for the Constitution, like this. I mean, so that whole, that whole thing is just people um, who want to take shots, who say stuff like he's trying to profit off of this whole thing. Man, FOH, ESPN, Fox, and all these guys, they try to profit off of his name every damn day. When they talk about him, when the, when the news cycle was slow, what are they doing? They, yeah, that's true. That moves the needle. That is definitely true. Yeah, they, they can suppose that for that. All right. Um, shout out to Cat. Like, we'll all be waiting for that. Um, y'all man, Martavis Bryant, wide receiver for the Pittsburgh Steelers. <laughs> He's been tripping all week. Um, you know, he's been, first of all, we know his history, um, as far as his availability, he's been suspended a couple of times for violating the league's drug policy. Um, now he's trying to get a contract, but he's refueled his trade speculation because he just doesn't seem to be getting along with his teammates. And there was a fan who posted on Instagram that, his teammate, rookie Juju Smith-Schuster, is a better receiver than him. And he felt the need to actually get on the post and talk where he said, uh, Smith-Schuster is nowhere near better than me, fool. All they need to do is give me what I want, and y'all can have Juju and whoever else. He later deleted this, and, you know, as all the controversy swirled, <laughs> the next day he called out of practice um, saying that he was sick. He called out sick. And then the day after that, the Pittsburgh Steelers, because of, you know, the stuff that he's on Instagram and I guess all the subsequent happenings in the matter, they ended up suspending him for this week's game. Uh, what do y'all think about this whole thing? Like, and how quickly it, are the Steelers going to get him up out of here? Yeah, he's he's gone and there's a whole lot of issues here, right? So, there is a small contingent of people, may, maybe truthfully, maybe truthfully, who feel as though a part of this is tied to the fact that the Steelers organization wouldn't stand behind him wanting to, and a few other players wanting to come out and take a knee. So he was one of the contingent that wanted to uh, protest. And, and, you know, staying in the locker room was not, you know, his idea. Uh, and he's and he's had some issues, as had Antonio Bryant, because of that, right? But the reality is, the reality is, the position and the time we live in, the position he plays, is a position where self-promotion is the name of the game and the flavor of the day. And he feels as though, probably rightfully so, that he has a lot more talent than is being displayed because he's not a feature uh, receiver in the offense. And so he's complaining because he's not getting the, the balls thrown his way that he, you know, needs to in a contract year. So now it's all about, you know, self-promotion or, or complaining uh, because of that. He's going about it all wrong. Even if a portion of that motivation is rooted in, the protests or him being upset that the team didn't support that protest. We know that another portion of that is contract related. And 
he's he's separating himself from the team and making this about his brand and his earning potential and what he's not getting he and it, it's a bad look. A defensive back. Yeah. No playing. <laughs> It's a, Yo, bad, man. it's a bad look. It's a bad look for him. Let me just say this. Let me just say this real quick. Because uh, I, I was ready to go with you with the uh, whole concept of him wanting to do more in terms of uh, protesting. But the fact is, you wrote that nonsense and then tried to lead it like a coward, man. Um, <laughs> it, it's about it, it's about how you move, right? So if that was the case and you come out like if, – if you're pissed about not being able to take a knee or whatever, how about putting that on Instagram? You wait for this situation and start disrespecting your teammate and all that, man. Like you, he handled that the completely wrong way. He was he was emotional, man. One of the forty eight laws of power is man always always say less than necessary, man. And he went too far, so I can't even ride with him on that. I mean, this comes on the story. As, we just talked about a story about Colin who like is trying to like do great in the world and be an active. In the same league, we're talking about a dude going off on social media because someone said that his teammate was better than him. Like you gotta have figures in the map, dude. And then you gotta have figures in the map. So you gotta have figures in the map. Like I look, I look, at, I look at some celebrities and athletes. And you look at their mentions, and some of the stuff that's said to them is like just straight filthy. It's just straight filthy. So, but you, that, that's that's part look of the it. world we live in, where you have to be able to shout deal out with to Jamel. Shout out to Jamel Hill. Yo, she has are like worse than literal like terrorists. Like she has like some of the nastiest, filthiest, dirtiest mentions in, in the in the world. And if anyone who doesn't believe me, go look at, at Jamel Hill on Twitter and just look at her mentions. Like the way she's disrespected, like you know, but we're talking about an athlete, um, you know, who has other issues, man. But if that if that was your issue about not being able to protest, let me see you go off about that. Like you're doing too much right now, beloved. That's a good point. And the dude, Juju Smith-Schuster, I don't know how many people know this about him. He doesn't have a license, therefore he doesn't have a car. So he rides his bike to the Steelers facility, you know, whenever they have practice or meetings Come or, or on, whatever. Man. The Come day on. after all of this happened, Juju Smith-Schuster's bike was stolen. <laughs> um, yeah. A few days later, a man who said he purchased the stolen bike on the street um, turned it over to the police and they're supposed to return it to him. Um, or maybe they, maybe they did this already, but you know, after Man, all this was that said, ain't, that ain't done, nothing. That ain't nothing you know, but Ricardo being a crime fighter. Ricardo <laughs> was a crime fighter and found me. <laughs> yo, yo, he took that way too far. You being real petty. You want to take my man bike though? Come on. Cause. No, no, that's real petty. All right, that bike must have been fired too, because the boy said he paid two hundred dollars for it on the street. And you know, if you buy it on the street, you're getting a discount. So he paid, he paid like you know, I mean, two bills for that junk on the street. So it must have been a nice bike. Yo, I never paid more than fifty dollars for anything on the street, and cars included. And women, <laughs> my fault. <clears throat> <clears throat> All right, that's what happened this week while y'all were on the grind. Y'all crazy. Um, here's some quick birthday shout Birthdays, of course, are brought to you by Digital Extreme Technologies. Do you or your business need a custom website? Well, for dynamic, professional, and most of all, affordable custom website solutions. This is not $50 on the street affordable, but it's affordable relative to other custom websites. Uh, you need Digital Extreme Technologies. No need to break the bank. For an effective online presence, top quality, results-driven websites, and incredibly affordable prices. And yes, financing options are available. So you can put something on it and pay on it every month. So visit digitalextremetech.com or call 267-205-4203. And for discounted rates, be sure to tell them that War Room Sports sent you. My birthday, yay! All right, shout out to the machine gun, Monta Ellis, who turns... 32 years old. Uh, yeah, I remember when he used to when he played for the Warriors. When he was in the what we called the Call of Duty backcourt. Who was yeah, it? Yeah, and the stuff he let that thing let that thing fly. Yo, no, it was it was before. Wasn't Yo, it? it wasn't Steph. It was uh Brandon Jennings. No, no, who was it? Was it? Brandon Jennings. Brandon Jennings. <laughs> was it Jennings? Yeah. yeah, and it was yeah it was when he was uh, when Jennings. he was a buck. Yeah, it was when he was a buck. That. It wasn't when he was with uh. 
No, it was, no, it was the Warriors. It was the Warriors. It was the Warriors. He called the Call of Duty backcourt. I'm trying to think who was there with him. Brandon Jennings, but the Brandon Jennings, Jennings never played with the. Yeah, no, Brandon it was Jennings Steph. Never it's, with, with, it's, uh, when, it's, when, it's when Steph first got in the league. It's when Steph first got in the league. Monty was there, and they used to like at, like the team would take maybe like 60 shots, and it would be like 58 between those two. It's when <laughs> him, it's when Steph first got there. Sure. Nah, but we used to call. We used to call Monta Ellis and Brandon Jennings the Call of Duty backcourt, though. No, I it was with the, it was with the it, no, I know, I know it was with the Warriors because um, it's on one of our YouTube videos. But uh, it was him and Steph. Oh God! It wasn't uh, with the Bucks. Either, either way, it's Gun and Bull's birthday. He turns thirty-two. Shout out to Gun and Bull. Um, Yo, um, Gun and Bacchiani. Bull can't get a run. Ba- who? Gun and Bull. Oh. Gunnar Ball can't get a run? He not signed? Yeah, free agent. No, he ain't. Damn, Monta. The Pacers told him to step. <laughs> it's yeah, funny because, like, with all this porn going on, he, he, could, he could put it up for somebody. Like, he can, he can shoot for somebody. Yeah. You know, Monta <laughs> Allen's never he played. He can play for somebody. He just like, said he can shoot for somebody. He's never <laughs> Yo, played I think, he, I think he's over, ba- he over, over Bayless. <laughs> Everybody be dissing Baylor's. I don't understand it. <laughs> Yo, Baylor's what is trash. It about Yo. <laughs> Yo, Baylor's trash. My fault. Go ahead. Well, he only does one thing, though. All he's been yeah, doing that's is fighting up nothing. and shooting, and he's like 50%. He's like, he don't do that well. He's trash, dude. Yo, what, what you been watching? He been knocking that down. No, man. He's trash. Yo, he's trash. I don't even like the ball like that, but like you're like the third person I, I heard. He, he, no, because you defend the man. Like, yo, yo. I'm going I'm to go, go on back and go on record. I never liked him. I never liked him because I thought he was supposed to – I thought he was supposed to do more than be a shooter coming out. But for what he does in his career, he ain't trash at all. I, I, trash. Trash. And I wouldn't even call him a shooter. He's just shooting well right now. No, he's um, sanitation, man. Free my yeah, man Covington – and Bayless is trash. Damn. Well, my fault. This is Monte's birthday, though. We, well, let's, let's not take away from the fact that we celebrate Monte's birthday right now, man. And Andrea Bargnani, um, he turns 32. Jesse Armstead okay. is 47 years old. And shout out to the older Golick brother, Bob Golick, turned 60. So we like to give a War Room Sports salute to all of these gentlemen on their birthday. Have a good one. Don't my do birthday. anything Yay! that I wouldn't do or anyone my lineage wouldn't do. <laughs> Shout out to Junior. Um, real quick, before we move on, check out our website, warroomsports.com. While you're there, make sure you take your time, look around, click on that Contact Us tab if you want to send us a message about the company, the show, to inquire about sponsorship and advertising opportunities, or join in the network in any capacity. We need writers. We need show hosts. We need producers. We need everything. So hit, hit us up if you want to get into the biz. For general inquiries, email us at info at com. But while you're browsing the site, make sure you click the memorabilia tab so you can show us some monetary support. Buy some War Room Sports merchandise. Click that blog tab to read our latest articles in the All's Fair and Sports and War blog. Uh, our latest one that was uh, published today was by Gus Griffin, who you guys are going to hear here in a little while, uh, given his NFL investment picks. Uh, He wrote something on Michael Jordan, because Michael Jordan recently said something about super teams. He's complaining. So he wrote an article uh, basically addressing Michael Jordan and his super team claims. So check the blog out. Check check out our uh, iTunes podcast. You can subscribe to that. You can also watch our webcast at War Room Sports TV, or you can listen to the WRS Podcast Network that we've been talking about the whole show, and you can download our free War Room Sports mobile app on Android or iOS to get everything I just mentioned on the go. But right now, if you're listening to the show and you want to talk, join the JW Philly Realty chat room at blogtalkradio.com slash the war room to enter the chat room. If you don't already have a profile on Block Talk Ready, you can sign up for one. But if you don't want to do that, you sign into your Facebook and Twitter accounts. And while you're at it, make sure you click follow because that'll get you updates and reminders about the show. 
uh, i.e., if we're doing the show at a special time like we did last week, it'll let you know that. So you'll be there when we're on the air and you won't be there too early or too late trying to listen live. Um, we'll be taking questions and reading posts from Facebook, Twitter, chat room, and the World of Sports Game Time group on the Group Me app during the show. But if you want to call in and speak with us, dial the Digital Extreme Technologies hotline at 323-410-0012. Press 1 when prompted. But if you're already listening from your phone, just press 1 if you want to talk. All right, Jimmy, you. Yo, real topics. quick, real quick. Real quick, I just want to say this real quick. Um, Yo, boy trash because he spells his name J E R R Y D. Guess that. That's not Jared. Uh, Jared. I give you that. <laughs> okay. I definitely give you that. Oh, fuck, that's, that's, that's a reason. <laughs> like, it, 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 it's weird. It's Jerry weird. trash. But go ahead, Dad. You got it, man. All right. Um, hot topics are brought to you by Sports the Book. You guys tired of reading the same old sports book, the same list, rankings, starting lineups, and all kinds of subjective information that corny dudes try to pass off as facts? Be sure to pick up your copy of Sports. Yes, I said sports. Pete, the acronym. You can spell. You get it. Smart people only read the sports. Now go out and spell that. See if you can get it. It's a mixture of sports and hip-hop culture that'll keep you on the edge of your seat. It'll keep you laughing. It'll keep you thinking. it's, It's just interesting, and it'll keep you in a great mind state and a great Yo, I can't say enough about it. And it's not just because my my brother wrote it, because Jimmy is the author of this book. It's just because it's really that good. So just go to sportsthebook.com or get your copy from our website at warroomsports.com. But wherever you decide to get it, just don't miss the movement. You get it from Jimmy, too. Yeah, you got me. His trunk. But <laughs> yeah, you got, me, you got me looking at these boys' stats. And his stats, his stats don't look bad, but they fake news, though. That doesn't tell the whole story. <laughs> Yo, I don't know what you're talking about, man. <laughs> Yo, he's playing Mike he Weldon. Yeah, it's like people. Man, Jimmy don't don't want to. Yo, like I, watch, I, watch, I, watch, Yo, I watch every like minute him. of every game. I watch every minute of every game this season. I just don't like Ball, man. Like, yo, I was about he, to say, that's why I'm, to... that's why I don't understand because like he definitely last yo, year he, like... he didn't even play. And and also it's one of them things where like they lost a lot of close games. They probably should have won. I was gonna talk about them later. So he just makes mistakes at the wrong time. So he got a little bit of that Romo gene, I guess. <laughs> well, they're a young team, so that's going to happen. We can definitely talk about that. He's a 10 year vet, though. What they let the, the, the <laughs> Rockets do last night. That was. Yeah. Uh, Yo, shout out to James Harden for a big time defensive play. I never thought I'd say that in my life. Uh, but anyway, go I'm ahead. Sitting here. I know, I'm, I'm just sitting here like, we, uh, can we give him credit for that? For real, for real? But <laughs> Yo, that was a good defense, though. Like, that's the best defense I've seen Harden play ever. Nah. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. It seemed like everything was... That ain't hard to be in here. That ain't hard to be in here, but still. No, nah, yeah, that's true. All right, well, real quick, we're just going to give a shout-out to the World Series, which is underway. It's tied at a game of peace. Uh, Clayton Kershaw and the Dodgers came out game one, went at three to one behind a dominating performance from Clayton Kershaw. And then the Astros got back into the series and evened it up with a seven to six win on Wednesday. Just a quick, like, you know, neither one of you guys root for any of these teams, but who would you rather see win? Um, out of these, I was teams? rooting for the Dodgers to win. I'm rooting for the Dodgers to win just because, like, they got a black owner and Magic Johnson. Um, and also, because Clayton Kershaw, like, yo, I don't know. Magic Johnson. I don't, <laughs> I don't know what. I don't know what Clayton. I don't know what Clayton Kershaw like uses or whatever. But yo, he, whoever, whatever he uses, other pitchers should use that. Yo, his ability to pitch is like, it's crazy. Like the the movement on his on his ball falls is crazy. But you know, um, this, is, this is one of this that's is what she season, said, Jimmy, where Clayton Kershaw could get that proverbial monkey off his back because he has yeah a reputation of being a choke artist in the postseason. So. He, he played well in the first uh, game, though, I'll tell you that. And their yeah, bullpen definitely. sold him out last night. They bull because I thought the game was over. I cut it off. I thought it was over. I I want to watch. I want to watch uh, Lavar's boy. I cut the Dodgers game off, thinking it was over. 
Yep, and the Astros. I I think I'm pulling more for the Astros. I mean, you know, they got the sentimental story this season. This is kind of like the Saints after winning after Hurricane Katrina. You know, uh, we know what happened in Houston, and and not only because of the hurricane and the floods and 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 all of that sentimental stuff. The Astros have been the worst team in baseball for the past decade or so, and it, it's good to see that cycle, you know, it's, it's good to finally see them on the other side of that. So I'm like, since we know how this cycle goes and we know windows are opened and closed very quickly, like I would like to see them. Yeah. One while that window is open. Yeah. The Dodgers have basically but been a, here for the past 10 years. I'm going to keep it. I'm going to keep it. I'm going to keep it a million. I'm rooting for the Dodgers just because of Donald Sterling. So salute. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I'm, I'm rooting for the Dodgers just because, like, I mean, EJ was sacrificed. So Magic has to continue to win at everything in life because, because he, made, he, made, he, made the ultimate, he made the ultimate sacrifice. So he has to win at everything else. Yes. Dear Lord, won, you may have my son make her a daughter. Yeah. Yo, Magic already won. I ain't saying. Yo, he wanted. Yo, the boy wanted basketball. He wanted business. Yo, he beat AIDS. Like it's only right that yo, he wins a chip on the owner of the baseball win, team. He did not win at that. That being a dad, though, he did not win at that. Well, well, I said he sacrificed his only begotten to win at everything else. <laughs> EJ, like, why have you forsaken me? Um. Anyway, <laughs> let's. <laughs> we. <laughs> We got Fred Purdue on the line. We're going to do five minutes with Fred in college football. That's what she said. Bring him on now. <laughs> and, <laughs> no, she was like one no, minute. She said two. All right, Fred Purdue is in the building. What's going on, good brother? What's going on, fellas? How y'all doing? Pretty good. How you Pretty good, Purdue. Man. What's good? Man, I'm great, college, man. I'm great. I'm great, college man. College football it's season good. heating up for you. I know you're excited. Of course. You know, Big time robbery games, and of course Miami's undefeated. So why? What is there what? not to like? The shout out, back. shout out to Saquon Barkley. Yes, the of course. Back. Well, you know his name has to come up. Um, so let's jump right into it. Uh, Notre Dame is who I want to ask you about first. Um, Notre Dame, to me at least, you know their season has been a little bit surprising. So is there a path for Notre Dame to 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 wiggle their way into the college football playoff? Uh, they have possibly the most difficult schedule in the country. And well, I guess not. I mean, <laughs> you, you've already, you, I mean, you've already seen, you're, you've seen USC dominated. Uh, you have, you've already beaten Michigan state. You've already lost to number two, uh, number three, Georgia. Uh, you have Miami left on the schedule and you have Stanford left on the schedule. So, and not to mention that NC state team they're going to see on Saturday is, has probably, if not the best, one of the top two or three defenses in the country. Uh, and that that's, and the offense can go with it. Uh, the last time they saw each other, they were, they were in a hurricane like rain, literally. And it was a wet sloppy field. I, throw that game out. I don't even take anything away from it. And this note and with all of that being said, you still have Josh Adams who's inserted himself into a Heisman conversation. Brandon Wimbush has some Nick Marshall form elements to his game uh like the former Auburn quarterback and so, some things are going right for those little green people in South Bend. I don't know if I like that too much. I, you know how I feel about those little green people. Stop hating. All right. So um this five she can't help us though know, that you and I talked about kind of off air that could possibly crash the playoff party or at least be featured in one of the New Year's uh, six games. Who are these five schools that you? Uh, uh, really, for, for me, I, I see the power, the group of five, uh, which is any school that is not in the Big Ten, Big Twelve, Pac Twelve. SEC or ACC or no and and or Notre Dame who they list them they are considered an independent but they have one foot in and in the ACC playing five ACC games and then doing their own thing because they have the best contract in amongst TV rights with NBC. Uh, for me, there's really only two teams when it comes down to it because USF 
and University of South Florida and UCF, University of Central Florida, both have really good head coaches. Uh, Charlie Strong, yeah, he was fired at Texas. Great. We all knew that was going to happen at some point. Job was too big for him. He moves back on. He comes back to the state of Florida where his recruiting roots are still there, and he's found a quarterback in Quentin Flowers who, if you've not seen a, 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 Bulls, a USF Bulls game, please go watch Quentin Flowers. If there was not a guy named Lamar Jackson at Louisville, this would be the dual threat dynamo quarterback in the co- in college football. Uh, they're very comparable players. I think Lamar might have a little bit of a stronger arm, but um, for the college game, he is everything you want. He has the arm talent. He has the ability to get out and extend plays, running the football. And by the way, they're an explosive offense, and the defense takes care of them too. Uh, but UCF also has some some magic going on because they have – Scott Frost now is their head coach, who was the former offensive coordinator at Oregon uh, under Mark Helfrich, and he was also an assistant with Chip Kelly. He's brought a lot of the, the Oregon system, that up-tempo, spread, move really fast. He's brought that to UCF. So now you have an Oregon system with Florida athletes. And on top of that, he's playing a little scout team quarterback by the way. So these two teams are on a collision course. So really at some point we're only going to have one team who could really, really crash some things if if they can somehow get some votes. The voters want to be a little bit biased to the bigger schools, but I think whoever wins this one should have at least an outside shot. They're the Boise State uh, when Boise State is on a downturn right now. All right, so uh, B. Austin said that name earlier. I, I expect his name to always come up this season when we're talking Heisman watch, but what's your latest on your Heisman watch? Uh, Saquon Barkley, is he's there. He, we all know what he can do. I mean, almost 800 yards on the ground, uh, eight touchdowns already, but he's not just a running back. He's a versatile back. He can catch the football out of the backfield, 75-yard run, to open the game uh, against Michigan, a defense that hadn't allowed a 100-yard rusher in who knows how long. It's been about two years now. And he completely obliterated that team. And he has some more some more time to, to – some more games to really put up big numbers. Ohio State's defense is going to be big for him. If he can knock that team off uh, and really put up some big numbers, you could be talking about the Heisman race being locked up, but some other names that kind of – are still hovering around Bryce Love uh, running back at Stanford. He leads the country in rushing yardage. He has over 1,300 yards and 11 touchdowns, but he's a game time uh, uh, decision right now for tonight's game. Uh, Lamar Jackson is still in it. I'm still not willing to take him out when he did, when he does what he does against teams like Florida state, despite their record, they're still Florida state on the defensive end, and he's putting up big numbers. He has almost three – he has about 2,500 yards of 17 touchdowns, uh, only about five, four or five picks. Jonathan Taylor is a freshman at Wisconsin, stud running back. He has 1,100 yards and 11, 11 or so touchdowns. Damian Harris at Alabama, because we always have to talk about the Crimson Tide. They win everything, right, whether it's national titles, conference titles, Heisman trophies. They even get Super Bowls at some time, at some point. So he's inserted himself now because he's had some big games as of late. I don't think he'll win it, but he'll make it hard for some other guys like uh, Baker Mayfield, who at Oklahoma is – he's everything for that team. And a guy like a Josh Adams, who at Notre Dame is going to have to have some huge games. But he's had 100 yards in every – all but uh, two games this season. and He's having a big impact so far as well. All right. And, um, last thing, what, what your initial playoff ranking predictions? Uh, this one's going to be tough because, for me, Alabama, they're, they're going to walk in. We all know this is going to happen. So we can kind of put them in ink until probably around the um, – until they play Auburn, I'll keep them in ink until then. I don't see anyone unseating them. Penn State right now is going to – I'm going to leave them there because I just don't trust Ohio State's offense. I'm not making a pick. I'm just making a prediction. Take this for how you do – how you will because we all know I'm going to pick them, you know, against all the other fans here, so I'm not giving my picks. Nice try. Um, but Penn State's going to stay there. I think Georgia's going to, going to be able to hover around. 
Uh, but the, the unknown here is going to be a, a Notre Dame team. If they can find a way to just keep climbing, I think the voters are going to really look at how Notre Dame is, is navigating their schedule. Uh, right now, they they have a long shot to get in early, but I think they're going to be well in the mix despite a loss. And, you know, that Miami Hurricane team has a good chance of being that odd team out. I mean, you're only you're, – you're the alone undefeated team right behind Ohio State and Clemson. All right. And there you have it, Fred. Let everybody know where they can find you on Saturday during all the action. Well, you can find me on Twitter at – Fred Purdue CFB, and of course I'm going to be monitoring a lot of the, the games like Florida, Georgia, the, the world's largest outdoor cocktail party. They don't want us to call it that, but it is that. Uh, you'll also be seeing some, some games such as Miami, North Carolina. Uh, North Carolina has nothing to play for, but Miami's still kind of in that mix. Uh, you're also going to be seeing some, some schools like NC State and Notre Dame. Those are going to be some – that's going to be a huge one. So, uh, you can catch me there. I'll be talking about all of these games throughout, kind of going back and forth, keeping my pul- my finger on the pulse of college football. All right. Thanks as usual. Nice. Thanks for calling in. And we will holler at you next week. All right, guys. Thanks for having me on. All right. No doubt. Freddie. It's Fred Perdue, everybody. Uh, World Room Sports college football contributor. You can also check him out. World Room Sports Podcast Network on its college football program, Quick Slants. All right, we're going to go straight from Fred to Gus Griffin, who is waiting to give us his investment picks, his NFL investment picks for the week. So we're going to go straight to the phone lines to Gus. Gus, what's going on, good brother? How you doing, my man? Pretty good. You know, first things first, we got to ask you, where are you this week? Where's Gus? I'm in second. <laughs> I'm in Sacramento, California. All right. He can't okay. stay put. Okay. But once again, back he's on down, the road. Bay Area and back down. Uh, we didn't hit that 500 mark as of yet. Gus's record for the season is 14, 16, and 1. You, you care to elaborate on that? <laughs> well, let me see now. Did I use the jet lag one excuse yet? <laughs> yeah, we got that one out of the way. Yeah, we use that already, homie. Yeah, we use that. Uh, <laughs> okay, well, well, give me a minute. I'll think of something else. <laughs> All right, well, let's, let's get into these games, your, your picks for the weeks. We have the Raiders plus three versus the Bills. What do you see here? Raiders went out right. I think um, Carr's back. Um, Amari Cooper finally had a breakout game, and Did luckily he? I didn't trade him for my fantasy team. Um, got the Raiders plus three. I think they'll win outright. Okay. Then we have the Browns and Vikings with their over under being 38. Taking the, taking the under there. Um, Vikings, Vikings are one of the best under teams in the league. They have good defense and very conservative offense, not a lot of weapons. And well, they're playing the Browns. The Browns, the Browns, are, the Browns. are the Browns. Yeah, I was about to say the yeah. Browns are the Browns. Yeah, that, I think that might be the safest bet. Um, we have Ravens uh, minus three versus the Dolphins. Yeah, um, you can't trust the Dolphins. <laughs> you just can't trust them. So they 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 won down in Atlanta. They came back and won, beat the Jets. Come on, now it's the Dolphins. You know, there's there's an ebb and flow to this with a lot of teams, and they're one of them. As yeah. is true with the Ravens, yeah. they'll, they'll sneak up at some point. Gus, one and of the things like you Matt can Morris. say whenever the Dolphins, whenever the Dolphins come into question is when you have a quarterback like Jay Cutler, dot dot dot, yeah. and then just <laughs> who's not even you on the, the show Fred. this week. Yeah, so Matt Moore should be getting the start. So you know, depending on who you ask, that could be an upgrade, you know, or it could be a downgrade. Um, <laughs> so. Uh, the Bucks Panthers and their over under is forty four point five. Taking the over, uh, I think it's going to be a very close, high scoring game. Take the over with the Bucks and Panthers. All right, fourteen, sixteen, and one. I think this might be the week, Gus. I think this, this might. Is gonna, be this has got to be the week. 
It's got to be a week. I've been on probation, I've been told, and uh, I, I thought, word is you're going to give me my 30-day notice if things don't change soon. I, I think this is the one, man. I would I would take <laughs> pretty much all of these bets, but definitely the, the, the yeah. over-under bets. I, I think those are pretty much a lock. But it's all good. We'll yes. see where you land next week. Happy and safe travels, and we will talk to you next week. Oh, yeah, one more thing. Oh, go ahead. Uh, DeMarcus, DeMarcus Cousins is back in Sacramento tonight uh, with um, the Pelicans, and Anthony Davis is hurt. So it would be pretty nice to see an over-under on how many points Cousins puts up on his former team. I got uh, – if you put it at 30, I say over 30. I'd say over 30 mm. as well. What do you say, Over B? 30. Jimmy? A- absolutely over 30. Absolutely. All right, let's keep let's get up to thirty five. Keep it interesting. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Mm. Thirty five. Uh, yeah, I, I would go under thirty five. You're gonna have you're gonna have thirty two okay. points. Thirty two points, fourteen rebounds, and zero assists. <laughs> yeah, keep in mind, Anthony Davis is out. How so many he's gonna blocks? get all the food. Yeah, he's not gonna pass the How ball. How many blocks? Blocks. Uh, just that one. ain't his forte now. <laughs> I'm about to say one one block, zero assists. See where I'm going here. It's all about scoring the ball and getting the ball back for himself to score some more. <laughs> yep. All right, 30, I, guess I got 34, week, 13, man. and one assist. One assist. Okay. All right. That's about right. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm here. That's, that's about right, I think. Okay. All right, well, we'll see how that goes down, and we we hoping that you get over 500 this week. I think, like I said, I think this is the one. I think this is the week. This is the After week. that, you know, we got to keep cruising. Gotta keep it up there. Okay. <laughs> All right, so we'll let you next week, Gus. <laughs> All right, gentlemen. All right. Gus Griffin, uh, everybody, our jet-lagged NFL investment expert. <laughs> Go out there and, and, and make your investments right now. I think this is going to be a good one. So, you, so, you know, take that advice. All right, so let, let's let's stay in the NFL, B, because, you know, I want to talk to you about your quarterback, Carson Wentz. He's been getting a lot of um, attention lately. You know, people are saying – Reach around, he, grab up, front runners, swallow. MVP. He went on Monday Night Football against the Washington Professional Football Team. And after a slow start, he just basically dominated that game. Another four touchdowns in that win. Uh, the, the Eagles are six and one right now, kind of flying high. No pun intended. How good is this guy right now? Um, Carson Wentz is is playing right now in a zone where. There's really now that God is injured. There's really only one other quarterback that I think is uh, is maybe at that level or above, and that's Tom Brady. Uh, I I would say that Carson Wentz is the second, if not third, best quarterback in the NFL right now, based on his play. Um, you know that wouldn't be the overall ranking I would give for the season, or I'll be definitely not for career, but right now, this instant, I, I can only think of Tom. Terrific being uh being better. What about Alex Smith? He balled. Um he would be that number three. I think that you would have to ask yourself which one would you rather have and which one is is um is your pick. So, you know, in, in terms of where guys are playing right now, I, I would have ranked um I would have ranked Aaron Rodgers one, uh Tom Brady two, uh Wentz three and Alex Smith four. Mm, I feel that. Um I, I you know just watching him lately man, you know like probably like I said last week when we were talking, I I just the word special keeps coming up to me, and you know being mm-hmm. an Eagles fan mm-hmm. all my life, like I I in my opinion I really haven't seen special since Randall Cunningham, mm-hmm. and I think even though he was special, his coach who was all about that <laughs> defense boss, 
kind of neglected, you know, the special yeah. talent that he had at quarterback, and he yeah. probably never became what he could have been in this league. I think Randall Cunningham had the tools to be mentioned among the greats. Do you know five? Do you do you know at at that position? Do you know Deb? Do you know what? Um, do you know really what Carson Wentz is? I'm going to tell you who he is. Carson yeah. Wentz is Andrew Luck with a line, with an offensive line, and the weapons and tools around him and a good and a decent defense. That's what we're seeing. We're seeing an Andrew Luck-like talent, um, probably not as fast, I would say, straight line speed, uh, but similar explosiveness, similar athleticism, similar command uh, of the offense, and the ability to utilize his athleticism in a way that that imposes, kind of imposes his will on a game. The thing that I'm most impressed with uh, with him this year is not all of the escape artists uh, acts, but his command of the offense and their ability to combine what he did at North Dakota with, you know, an NFL playbook and get the very best out of him. You know, Dev, he's going to the line of scrimmage and reading the fronts, reading the front seven, adjusting protections, and audibling in and out of plays based on coverage, which, right. you know, between you and I, we, we know why that's so big for a guy in his second year based on what we've seen with previous Eagles quarterbacks. This guy, from a mental standpoint, gets it, and that's what makes him so scary. We've seen transcendent athletes at the position before, but I don't – we've seen someone with the full package that matches the arm mm-hmm. talent, the accuracy, and the, and the mental. And About the mental. him checking off and stuff, I was actually just explaining that to my wife the other day. I'm like, this is no exaggeration to me. I'm like, you know, this guy – is out there checking, probably calls like 20 audibles a game. Like I've literally seen Donovan McNabb, who's considered the greatest quarterback in Eagles history, audible 20 times in, in you know, in 10 years. In his entire career. <laughs> like I, in his entire and, career. You know, it's no, not no, no, a, no. Not, not just Eagles. It's just, it could be, a, you know, it could be a knock on him and how he understands the game, but it could also be, Andy Reid and how he chooses to control the game and control, you know, his quarterbacks. But I'm, I'm, I was impressed with that last season, though, you know, his, the, the package, the playbook package that they gave him last year wasn't anywhere near as extensive as what he has now. And even now he doesn't have a full run of the playbook, but even in his rookie year, I was impressed with, you know, the fact that he would go up to the line um, check off, kill some things, um, change the play to what he thinks might work, whatever his options were in that situation. I was impressed as a rookie. So it's like you kind of saw last year that he had this kind of talent. He had this kind of control and command over an offense. It just didn't show up statistically. We know he started out like gangbusters, had a great three games, the Eagles were undefeated, and then he kind of statistically faded back into that rookie territory. But I think anybody who's a purist and understands everything that they were watching, like you still had high hopes for him, even though I I don't even want to use the terminology hit the rookie wall. He just, you know, he just faded back to to earth a little bit. I was sold from the, I was sold from the first quarter of the first game and to provide some context yeah, with, he had with you his rookie, hello. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, to provide some context um, uh, of of what went on with him last season, Lane Johnson was gone for ten games. Nelson Aguilar, Jordan Matthews, and Hands were gone. Uh, and, and Dorrell Green Green Beckham combined That's to right. drop. Uh, a record 1,276 passes in one season. Not literally, but that's the number that I choose to go with. So 
I don't necessarily believe that his play tapering off was entirely due to him hitting the the rookie wall, so to speak. I yeah, think that's that, why I was trying to stray away from that term. Yeah, around. his talent, his talent, um, and then I noticed that he tried to force things because he realized he was playing with trash, and towards the end of games he had to quote unquote make it happen. So he would force throws to guys that can't catch normal throws, let alone high pressure situation catches. So that's what I saw last year, but I saw all the talent. I saw the accuracy. I saw the arm talent. I saw the athleticism. I I, I was so he and like you said, he had me at hello. So now this year is just piling on to, you know, what I'm expecting to see in terms of progression. And what is really scary is no matter what ends up happening this season, This is only the beginning, and I believe that he's going to get a lot better than what we see now. That's scary. Scary. Uh, um, That you talked about his arm talent. Some of that arm strength was put on full display on Monday night. Um, Next gen stats measured his his uh, deep throw to Matt Collins that on that touchdown pass said the ball traveled. a little, more than 62 yards in the air. 62, um, I had 62 that and a half. Yeah, about 62. 62. And I, I, I had noticed that myself. And even before I saw the next-gen stat, I was trying to measure it off myself. I, I thought it was about 61, and then they came out with the official 62-point-something. But, you know, that's impressive. You know what I'm saying? They said that was the deep thought- pass in the air in the last two years of – the NFL, and that, you know that's time. In that two years, you had Aaron Rodgers complete like two or three hail marys. So it's very impressive to, I, I, to see him. I saw I saw something more impressive in that game. Um, him rolling left off of a rollout to the left. He went about forty, about forty in the air, rolling to his left. And that looked like he just did. You like, see that? Did you see that? Yeah, was that the one to flicked. um to uh, Ertz? It looked like he just lost to, it. To er- yeah, yeah, he just, and even he just the, let the it, one to Matt Collins, let it go. So. The one to Matt Collins, it didn't look like he had a whole bunch of extra wind up to try to get the ball a little farther. He, you know, stepped up in stride and and just let it go. Um, oh no, he's a freak. He's a freak. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I hope so. I, you know, athletic. being a fan of the Philadelphia Eagles, man, it's like for me, it's like hope. You know, hoping that it continues like this, like you get that feeling, like man, it's about time that we get one. You know, a lot of people are going to talk about Donovan McNabb, like when you say that kind of thing, but I don't put Donovan McNabb in that special category. You know, he he had a yeah. lot of talent. You know, he could run and all that kind of stuff, and he had a very strong arm. But I, he's not in the special category as far as nah, I'm concerned. Not a, not even not even near not even near. Now the black protectionists and some other foolish fans will make a case, no matter how flawed and full of fallacy it is. But Donovan McNabb is nowhere near this kid's talent. I, I would say, and, and I'm not well. You know what people are going to say. I'm 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 kind of disqualified. But I'm not joking. I'm not trying to say this for effect. But I believe that if you take Donovan in his prime, he's not as good as Wentz is right now today. And I'm and, and I'm gonna make this case. I'm gonna make it case. I'm gonna win you over. My point: Donovan in his prime, if given two minutes to drive from the twenty yard no. line for point a man. score. <laughs> yeah. <Point man. laughs> I was sitting there like, eh. and then, you know, that's all you, yeah, you had me at hello. All right, so <laughs> speaking of one of his quarterback counterparts, somebody who has won an MVP, Cam Newton abruptly walked out of another news conference. Remember, he did this after the Super Bowl, and you know, after yeah, a Super Bowl, t- even I was somebody who wanted to go easy on him because you just lost the most important game of your life. And they're asking you questions right after, you know, the game. You kind of understand that emotion. But this wasn't even a post-game pressure. This is 
a presser after practice this week. And, you know, from what I heard, because I listened to the video, the question wasn't even, I don't know, the, I didn't even see why the question could evoke those kind of emotions. But when the guy asked the question, um, I think he asked something like, he, he threw out some of the good games that the offense has had, and he wondered if, well, he, you know, Cam thought the team could get back to that and have a couple of more no, uh, performances like that. No, no, the question the question asked was, why do you guys feel that you guys are having problems creating explosive plays or big plays? That was the question. And he said, the next question, question. Was, and before anybody yeah. could even ask yep. the next question, he just said, forget about it, and he walked out. So he's you know. a petulant he's a petulant child. He's a petulant child. It was disrespectful to the media, disrespectful to the fans, and really kind of disrespectful to himself. And the thing that 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 really is disappointing, the the I feel like the Carolina Panthers are enablers because they're they responded and said something to the effect that I'm paraphrasing. Cam Newton is required to give nine minutes of his time. He fulfilled that obligation as is the expectation and we support him and, you know, basically condoning that behavior, which that that's not cool. That's not, that's not cool. You're condoning this, this kid acting like a child and that's, that's whack. Well, after that, uh, Coach Riverboat Ron basically, you know, said we've had four straight weeks where we've had almost 300 yards consecutively on total offense. We put up points against Philadelphia, where we had a couple of bad things happen. I'm not sure you could directly point those at the quarterback. And, you know, he just said we just had some, some fluke things happen. So then they asked Cam Newton about those comments from his coach. And he said, nobody cares about my feelings. Nobody cares if the ball popped up in the air or got tipped. It's just on us to make oh, sure we have opportunities you to make plays. emotional now, witch. Now, that, that, you know, that's kind of – I'm not saying it's not right. That's just not the thing you expect your quarterback to say because your quarterback is usually the leader of the team. Now, I – I can speak for myself. I can even speak for you, B. There's been times where we've defended – a quarterback for maybe a few turnovers when, you know, if you look at the play, you look deep into the play, you know that it's not really his fault. Like maybe somebody did tip the ball or maybe um, it bounced off a receiver's hands. I know that used to happen with Eli Manning a lot. and People weren't trying to hear what we were saying. So while this is, you know, is, is definitely true, some things happen that are out of Cam's control quarterbacks usually don't use those excuses because as much as we defended cats like Eli in that, he never did that himself. He always just, you know, took the, took accountability for what he was supposed to take accountability for and just, you know, let them know how hard he and we, his teammates would be working to get it done. In the we, subsequent week. we watched, we watched that, um, that Eagles um, Panthers game. And I can say that, two of those interceptions were absolutely not Cameron Newton's fault. The problem is when you are a franchise quarterback and, he's not and the leader the of a team. Right. Oh, no, no. One of them, was, he threw a punt. But <laughs> um, when, you, when you are the leader of a football team and the franchise quarterback, because of the position of privilege you hold, you have to fall on your sword and protect Jonathan Jonathan Stewart from uh, from being a, a, a idiota and protect guys for not catching the passes. Like you can't throw them under the bus because they don't have the same they don't have the same protection in the media or in the organization that you do. So that looks very petty and cowardly on on Cam's part to for him to do that. Look at me, woe is me. Feel sorry for me. No one cares about my feelings. Yo, come on, man. Shut up. <laughs> he really didn't have to use the word feelings, but he did. <laughs> yeah, I, he's, yo, I just want to say real quick, I just want to add to this conversation. Um, 
he just has to mature. Like, but I don't know. At some point, like he's just not going to mature. I think at some did. point it's too late for that. <laughs> yeah, because I, so for me, like this whole story, when I saw this story, I was like, I'm just like disappointed. Like, dog, really? Like, you have to find a way to like. Ha- Again, we talk about like having thick skin and just handling different. Like, yo, I ain't answering that. That's the way. But to, like walk away, it's like it's it's like cowardice too. Like. Yo, he talked just stand up and like, yo. Skin, whatever he said. He yeah, was, whatever that now. Yo, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, sounds pretty thick. Balls for skin, but. <laughs> yo. <laughs> you got to just like throw shots back or something, man. You got to get on your, uh, your Greg Popovich John. Like, really? Uh, say something. Say something cocky. Man, we nice. I don't yeah, say something cocky. Eric is walking away. It's like part cowardice and part like childish, yo. Right? It was, and it was, it was like a, coward, a second child. thought walk away because he said next so question a coward, and before a coward, he got the next the question out, he just rolled up. Like I wonder, I wonder, like I, I legit, it's not even being funny. I wonder if he like sucked his teeth and he walked away like, mm. <laughs> and took his ball. Throw me that ball over there. I'm leaving. <laughs> All right, so I, I started a week before we get fully immersed into this thing of ours, uh, the NBA season. Uh, ben Simmons of our Philadelphia 76ers, he notched his first triple-double in only his fourth NBA game. He is now one of three, but he's now the fastest to ever do it, tied at four games with Hambone Williams of the Boston Celtics back in 1967 and Oscar Robertson. We all know the big O back in 1960. The crazy part about it is Lonzo was one, what was it, one rebound or one assist away from doing this a, a few nights back, so he could have been yeah. the fastest because he was under he was underneath four games at that point. That was like game two with Lonzo. He yeah. could have been that guy. Lonzo can still be the youngest player to get a triple double when he gets his first one. You notice I didn't say. I said when he gets his first one because Lonzo he yeah, won every game. He can get those ten, ten, yeah. ten type he, uh, he, uh, Even though he the gets, one he almost got would have been monster because that was twenty nine points, but he comes close to the ten, ten, ten every night. So yeah, he put them. Yeah, he put them Rondo uh, numbers up. He's Pepe. Yeah. He's Pepe Sanchez. He's Pepe Sanchez on steroids. <laughs> yo, he yo man. <laughs> Pepe Sanchez though. I mean, at least I gave him Rondo. I gave him Rondo, he even Pepe Sanchez, man. I bet he can't even jump. No, nah, his game Rondo don't his jump. game don't remind me of Rondo. It reminds me of Pepe more than Rondo. It reminds me of Rondo, man. Like his neither one of them shooting is that great. <laughs> neither one of them shooting is that great. The funny thing is though, when Lonzo gets going, like when he makes that shot, it's like nothing but bottoms. Like it's, 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 this is it's true, man. Yeah. You know what? You know what? You know I, what I, was but, uh, I was gonna, he I was gonna disagree with with Demi. I was gonna disagree because Lonzo is streaky. He his J is ugly. It's not. I think hold on, hold on, hold on. I think he Rondo misses cannot more shoot. so because no, you're not. It's be honest, you're not. You're not basing that on this season. You're not basing that on this season NBA. He only scored double figures like one time. So. How streaky can he be? He got streaky against the Sun. My man scored six <laughs> points last night, and they had an overtime game. Nah, nah, I'm not, I'm not judging. I'm not basing that on on NBA games. No but when when yeah, when okay. we go when we go to bat when we just go to the game when we just go to the game of basketball, it doesn't matter if it's an NBA game or a playground game with us that we invite Rajon Rondo to. He will not be the best shooter on the court. He can't shoot. At all, period. Yeah, but but the, the comparison to Rondo is in the in the fact that Rajon doesn't shoot. Um, well, then again, neither does Lonzo. Lonzo is so tentative to like he's he's like the most unaggressive point guard I think I've seen in like two decades. Um, right. I just don't know but how you're like, like that. He's, like, he's, he's trying to please everybody, and that you know that that could be the the case since he you know so much attention um, that he's coming to the league with. That could be the case. Like he. He doesn't want to do too much. He wants to please everybody. So when he does have a bad shooting night, it's mostly from the outside. When he's quick enough, I'm not saying he's the quickest of of point guards, but he's definitely athletic enough and he's big enough to get to to the hole and make some of his shots a little bit easier, get some high percentage shots in there. Even though these days, you know, the analytics guys will tell you 
what he's doing is the higher percentage shot, you know, out there jacking threes whenever he gets a, uh, an open look. But straight jacking. Yeah. I, I still think at this point, I mean, and and with a season like an 82 game season, it can definitely somebody can introduce themselves to the race because actually marketing for the Bulls is averaging 16 points, but I think it's going to be a two man race for the rookie of the year um, all season. And I don't know if Lonzo is going to be able to keep up um, with Ben Simmons. Um, I don't know. I don't know. But shout out to the homie Willie G and King Coos um, <laughs> because he picked Kyle Kuzma to be in, to be rookie of the year. When, <laughs> when Yo, he come hold on. With he not even gonna come close to his yeah. teammate in the votes. That. The, that, that was based on summer league. That's all that was. That was all based on summer league. But 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 Kuz was killed with the summer league. Always makes his judgments on summer league because last year Chris Dunn was gonna be the rookie of the year. He fell for that. Yeah, like every like like Yo, a lot of other who? people did, they fell for Chris Dunn who? as rookie of the year, and these cats don't even start. Like so that they're already behind the eight ball. Like at least pick somebody that's starting. Like it's it's rare that you're gonna get somebody coming on. Yo, the bench I'm gonna help. Gonna I'm gonna help out. League. I'm gonna help out all of our summer league watchers. Listen, guys, stop watching. It, 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 first it's of okay to watch it. On. It's okay to mm-hmm. watch it. I'm not. I'm not gonna go as far as that. But you do realize when they do these great things in summer league, 80, 85 percent of those guys aren't gonna be playing in the NBA. Like you can't really judge. People crazy, <laughs> man. Getting off in the summer league. Okay. Cool. See, I mean, these you can't even just preseason these days because all the best players are resting. They playing like four minutes a game, so. <laughs> All right, but shout out to Ben Simmons because that the stat was about him when we started talking about Lonzo because he's the most popular player in the league right now. <laughs> so shout out to Lavar's boy and my man King Kuz. And that's the thing I don't want anybody who's listening to take this as a diss. I think Kyle Kuzma is a very good player, and I think he will be a very good player, and I think he will push for that to to be in that starting lineup before the season is over. However, rookie of the year, <laughs> not even close. All right, so um, real quick before we get into this thing of ours, just let you guys know as usual, you can check out our website at War Rooms. Come speak with us about any of today's topics, mainly NBA, um, because that's what we're about to talk about. Dial the Digital Exchange Tech Hotline, 323-410-0012. Press 1 when prompted. If you're already listening from your phone, press 1 if you want to talk. And the reason I did extend that to more than just the NBA because I see we got Rob waiting on the line from Cali. I'm pretty sure he's going to have some words about B. Austin's comments about Donovan McNabb and uh, Carson Wentz and how B. Austin don't like black quarterbacks and all that kind of stuff. So we're going to let Rob on the line now. Rob, what's going on, good brother? I don't. <laughs> Yo, what's up, man? Can I hear you? <laughs> hey, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> what it is, nothing to say there. What's going on, Rob? What's on your mind, good brother? Man, thanks for the summary, Dev. Yo, it's your boy, Big Rob, aka Halloween's coming out. The freaks coming out at night. So, yo, anyways, man. Yo, first of first of all, I just want to get one thing up, Um, you know, the uh, first of all, I hope the Dodgers gonna take it. You know what I'm saying? L.A. is right, is really, really behind this. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I love also, L.A. I, we love it. Uh, uh, also, um, with the Lakers, you know, I'm, I'm impressed with your boy. I think Jeff was great when he gave the analysis and said, and people and people got to understand, he's going to be more like a Jason Kidd more than anything. He's not going to be nowhere near magic, but he has good, great court vision. I and uh, I think his shot will develop. Go. The only thing that 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 um, that that this distrust with this Laker team is that. I think Kuzma is to me. He's gonna overlap Brandon Ingram. People think Brandon Ingram. I hate when they try to compare him to Kevin Durant. Stop doing that. He's he's not gonna have to. (laughs) Please stop. Please stop. Stop. I don't. uh, First of first of. Yeah. First. Yeah. Then he need to get a sandwich. (laughs) Like I really think people have been overstating what his potential is 
you know, in the league for the last year or so. I'm not saying Brandon Ingram is not going to be a good player, but I, I think people go a little overboard when they talk about his potential. Yo, I'm not seeing I, 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 let, me speak, let me speak to that. Let me speak to that. I, I think it's – I don't know if it's like a Duke bias or something because he went to Duke and he's one of Coach K's guys. Um, but what, what I'll say is this. I watched him play last year and this year. I don't see what everyone sees. So maybe it's like maybe he's like a workout um, animal or he does something when he's not not in the live game. I don't know what it is because, Deb, I hear all every all the prospects, even other coaches, talk right. about his potential. And I'm like, what are they watching? But you um, know what, Jim? It, These days, it, everybody's just fooled for, uh, you know, some, a tall cat that can, you know, dribble a little bit like a guard. You know, the dudes that Yo, like, everybody's not Durant, though. Like, like, everybody's yeah, just like – I know exactly, but and the thing is, that's why we title our episode what it is today. The freaks come out at night, or the freaks come out every night, because now in the NBA, like that's kind of normal. It's 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 getting to be normal, and only a few of those dudes are not just looking like freaks, but playing like freaks. Like like your man Giannis, like he doesn't just look like an avatar. This dude is athletic and plays like an avatar. I don't see yeah, that. Yeah, so the whole thing like with Ingram. The whole thing with Ingram is, like, weird to me also because I feel like my man got skinnier in the offseason. Like, I don't know who the Lakers' yeah, strength and conditioning that? coach is, who comes to the league? but he should be there. Yo, I don't know who the Lakers' strength and conditioning coach is, but boy should be, like, suspended or fired or something. <laughs> it's, 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 I like know, the whole man. Sandwich, man. Crazy. Yo, the it's, whole starting lineup, because the whole starting lineup looks hungry, yo. Except for uh, Lopez. <laughs> and he ain't like the biggest yeah, sinner in the world. Go ahead, go ahead, Rob. My bad. No, 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 no. He's right. I don't know. I think it's just the eyeball contest. You know, they see a dude with med. They compare measurables and analytics. They think this guy. I, yeah, I think. Yeah, I think that's bad. right. Over analytics, they think this guy is gonna be next. Uh, you know, I, I remember what's that one guy's name that was, he, he played for Nuggets and he played for um. The Knicks, I can't remember his name, but they they said he was going to be a next Dirk Nowitzki, and I still haven't seen that. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you tell me. Um, Gallinari. 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 Yeah. But that's yeah, the thing, they're, they're always baller, quick to crown somebody the next something. Yeah, Danilo can play, but, you know, he ain't Dirk. Um, and that's the thing. They they see some – anybody they see hey, – Amen, he I'm not even going to say the same. If they have a similar – if they have something in their skill set that's that they can do that – so that, that a great does, then they're all, you know, they're automatically going to be that next person. And I think because Ingram is skinny and and probably can't bench press his kid six times if he has a kid, just like Kevin Durant couldn't at the uh, combine, like they're just looking at those things being similar and they say, okay, he could be Kevin Durant. But no, he can't be Kevin Durant. He doesn't have what Kevin Durant has. He doesn't have that same skill set. And like I said, I am in no way saying that Brandon Ingram is a bum because he's not a bum. But they're looking to this guy like he's going to be, you know, that guy on the Lakers. Like Lonzo's going to be the point guard that the do it all, get everybody and involved. We got, and like we got Brandon Ingram score, is going to be the scorer. Yeah, Lonzo, Lonzo's going to get it to Brandon Ingram. But we're going to be right. cool. Right. <laughs> That's going to be your, your one two punch. And I'm like, if Brandon Ingram is the only punch they're going to give to Lonzo, then Lonzo's going to have a bad career. <laughs> he better I, get that boy from talent. I, I, I wish, because I want to switch up the football for you, because I know y'all got to call us, y'all got to mm-hmm. move on, but I wish they would have yeah. kept Russell, because that would have been a classic one-punch-two combo. That's when I, I would probably Here. say they might have a chance to compete for AC. Maybe Why would Kevin, they keep two point guards? You can move in. Russell can play the two. Yeah, yeah, Russell. yeah, yeah. Could, As a one two well, punch. Yeah, it could be yeah. a one. I mean, could you move, could you move Russell to the two? I'll I think Russell he could. I don't. I don't disagree that that could work. And Russell is hooping right now. It's kind of showing you that the Lakers may have given up on him a little too quickly. But it might not have even have been about his talent. Like he, Boy, he lost snitch, a lot. Yo. Yeah, he he lost a lot. So you really, yeah. you really yeah. had to let him move on and get a, a a new batch of teammates, new scenery. Because no matter how much he improved, 
it was just going to be an awkward situation as long as he was in L.A. with those same uh, players. So. Yo, man, D'Angelo Russell. D'Angelo Russell got on the cover of New York Magazine and did the Get Money pose, man. He a snitch. But, yo, um, <laughs> yo. Yo. The, the one thing the one thing I can say, though, is uh, mm, I've been very impressed watching uh, Jordan Clarkson, though. He seems to be inspired by uh, the boy Zoe being a starter. Like, Clarkson's been balling. But I, I've always kind of been impressed with Clarkson. But, I, you know, I guess his, his curl just never, <laughs> it just never really, I, I don't Yo, know. It, but, if a lot, if, if, if Zoe had his aggressiveness, then we'd be in a, we'd be, uh, Yo. you know, really talking about the playoffs. Oh yeah, and Yo, be that be the year. On, on, on that on that note, there's certain guys in the NBA that are like they're they're Jedi's, and Kobe is a Jedi, and Jordan Clarkson wants to be a Jedi, so he went to go see you know the Jedi Master and get some advice, and it shows up in his game I think a little bit. He'll never be a Jedi Knight, always a Padawan, <laughs> but you know I understand. <laughs> Yeah. All right, Ryan, what's your, what do you want to say about football real quick before we get out of here? Oh, all right. Um, you know what? I'm not even going to get into be it. Yeah. We'll, be we'll, in the quarterback Austin. races. <laughs> see, but, but I, I Rob, you see, I, how, you see I, how B. Austin can say that, and then you'll go somewhere the next day online and be like, Dev and B. Austin, like, yo, I, I think for myself. Like, I, I, I we also said a long time ago he has a certain standard, and I have to agree with him. Um, hey, Negro, don't now, need it. Now, now <laughs> agree, 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 agree that he has a standard. Agree that he has a standard. Now, now I'm not going to say in McNabb. I'm not going to do good pick and try to McNabb. I'm just going to talk about Carson Wentz. I will say this. The reason why the first, as the first three or four games, the Carson Wentz stopped doing well as rookie season well, was because I think the coaching staff, because the coach, he stopped audibling because it, it, he didn't audible until like, I think until they played the Giants again, you know, at, at, at the link. So it, it, it was really awkward. And I, I think now, the, and I was praying, I was like, God, let the coaching staff play his game. Let him do what he need, what 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 makes him so well. Let him call audibles. Let him give him the command of the whole office. Give it's like Dev said, give him the whole play give him the playbook. Let him do his thing. And he's doing his thing this year. He's I, that's, I, I that's, have that's, never that's seen kinda him. tough to do as a rookie though. It's kinda yeah, tough as a rookie. You kinda gotta to bring him along playbook. a little early. That's why I said even though he didn't have the full run of the playbook, I still think last year was impressive. Um because you can in that case, you couldn't just look at the numbers. You know what I'm saying? Because, like B. Austin pointed out, there was a lot of factors of why the numbers tailed off. But even if 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 the only factor was the fact that he was a rookie quarterback and he slowed down after people got tape on him, he still – there's nobody who knows anything about the position and about the game. Yo. Who could have said, you know, Rob. they weren't impressed with what, what his potential was. Carson Carson Wentz Carson Wentz is the best quarterback that we've had since Randall, and he's already climbing and ascending the list. Norm Van Brocklin, Ron Jaworski, Randall Cunningham, Carson Wentz. Like that's it. It ain't it ain't nobody else even on that list, man. What about Rodney B? Well, well, oh hell no. True. Oh, well, his wife, yo, we'll put his wife up. <laughs> yo, shout out to. Bob, Holly Robinson Pete for giving him good inspiration to be on the bacon. Oh, man. <laughs> but but yo, but 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 yo, I mean, shout out to Randall, but he never won a playoff game with the Eagles. You know, um but, but uh, he oh, never had an offense. He well he didn't have an offensive line. People forget he, he didn't have an offense. His offensive line sucked. Real yeah. sucked. Real sucked. No, he, did. no, he didn't have an offense. <laughs> he didn't have an offense, period. He was like he had he was he like, he was like uh, Derek Carr in that commercial. I'll, that I'll, I'll, commercial. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you this. Sky's a, li- sky's a living. I know y'all was like, why wow, I post that crazy meme? Because l- l- I never got this excited while watching yeah, right. this highlights mean, of a court. I mean, Michael Vick. Like, and, 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 and I love McNabb, but yo, 
the things that he does, and I love Why? the things that Carson Wentz can do because he's he he is one of those quarterbacks. He's oh, okay. Oh, okay, copy. He's like with, and I'm probably reaching. Okay, I'm probably reaching. He's like sure. what Andrew Andrew Luck should have been if he had a better GM. His GM is trash. His GM doesn't know how to put pieces together, build an offense, build a team, build a, a top <laughs> star coaching. It should have been uh, like Andrew, Andrew Luck. Died. Yes, Carson yeah, Wentz I, is just doing things that just it, it makes you. Ex- I'm excited to watch. Rob, 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 let me, let me share something with you about Andrew Luck. Statistically speaking, through his first 70 games, Andrew Luck is on pace to be number one in so many categories. Like, he's, he is, Andrew Luck is actually a great quarterback. He just doesn't have a squad around him. So, I wouldn't. I wouldn't oh, oh, throw no. Andrew Luck on the on the junk heap yet. I think he's going to turn into something very special if he can stay healthy, <laughs> or if he no, can get no, out of no, 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 no. That's what I mean. No, that's what I mean. His GM sucks. Andrew Luck, Andrew Luck, he's going to win a Super Bowl. He's going to be the next, and then, and then Jimmy probably can argue about this. He's going to he's going to be the next John Elway. But he's not. And towards the end of his career, they're going to build mm. something. No, RG three the but, next to John Elway. Sports Illustrated said oh. that. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> shout out this course on straight. Oh, Clown. all right. I got, I, I gotta go, and, and I, I gotta right, go. Man. I got, I, I, but, but yo, you, if Donald Trump wasn't president, U.S. men's soccer, you would be the biggest disappointment of America. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> all right, man. We have let you next. Time. Damn. <laughs> True, I agree. All right, yo, Rob is hilarious, man. All right, so I. We're going to go back to the phone lines in just a minute. Just got to get into this NBA rap. NBA rap is brought to you by Audible. Is your schedule too hectic to read as much as you want? Try audiobooks. Kick back. Let someone else do the reading for you. All you got to do is visit Audible and sign up for your free trial at audibletrial.com in no time. You'll be listening to the latest bestsellers, hands-free, stress-free, while getting other things done at the very same time. And we we presume... (laughs) And within the year, you might have something to listen to from the homie Colin Kaepernick. Um, I did want to ask you guys about this Markel Fultz shoulder saga. Um, it, it's it's been it's been very interesting to say the least because the first thing we heard about coming into the season is. Markel Fultz was changing the form on his jump shot. Nobody really understood why, because he was a pretty decent shooter in college, to say the least. You know, he was 40% from the college three-point line. That's nothing to sneeze at. Um, And then we hear about a shoulder injury, but it's not supposed to be anything serious. So you watch the first four games of his career where he has totally avoided taking any jump shots, and anything he did shoot where he had to lift his arm was nothing outside of five feet. He gets his shot blocked a lot because he's forcing his way into the lane instead of taking jump shots when they're there. Um, he's horrendous from the foul line. And, you know, it's obvious to anybody with half a brain and who's played any portion of a sport before that he's having trouble lifting his arms over his head So he puts his hands up and tries to go all risks with his foul shot. Then his agent comes out and says, Markel got fluid drained from his shoulder um, prior to the start of the season. I went with that story. It felt a little weird because, you know, in all of my years of playing and watching sports, I'm not saying you can't. I'm not a doctor but I really never heard anybody getting their shoulder drained of fluid. Um, Then that story changed. The agent said, no, he didn't get his shoulder drained. He got cortisone shots for, you know, to cope with the pain. That sounds a whole lot more feasible to me than actually getting fluid drained out of one shoulder. But like I said, just because I've never heard it doesn't mean that that doesn't exist. Um, Now they finally decided to sit him supposedly for three games and then a reevaluation of the situation after he sees a specialist. Now, I think 
if if we can sit here and watch him play and know for a fact that something's wrong with this guy, I think the Sixers kind of dropped the ball on it because obviously he was trying to hide the severity of the injury, but with all the experience that the 76ers staff has with injuries and rookies being injured, like there's no way you can look past this and just chalk it up to somebody changing their form. So I think the organization you know, kind of looks bad in this whole thing, man. I don't, I don't get it. It's weird watching him play because, like, I remember watching him in college and how aggressive and how and how talented yeah. he was. And it's like, he's like a he shell. Of, he's a shell of himself. And I'll be sitting there like, I'll be sitting there like, yo, what if the uh, Sixers would have got the son of our, um, and he mixed him with the players they currently have? Although he probably still would be uh, less aggressive than him or Simmons wouldn't shoot a jumper. But anyway, um, yeah. and in it, terms it of work, it would not work anyway because they, you know, yo, that need, wouldn't work. Need the ball in the head, so. They, yeah, but it, anyway, that's so why they just watching him play. Though. That's why they picked him because they could, you know, run him as a two guard on offense, and he could guard the point guards on defense. But he he can't even find minutes on the floor because he's. Playing. But you know what I'm you know what I'm Terrible. nervous of though? Like um what I'm nervous of for him and his future is just watching him play. It also looks like to be like um part mental too. And I don't know whether it's coming from the fact that he doesn't have all his physical abilities right now, but sometimes situations like this happen and guys never bounce back. You yeah. know what I mean? Like this is this is his start this is his start to his career and it's not starting off right. And some guys never recover from that. Now, I, no, I hope I that's not the case. He has to have gotten at least 55% of his shots blocked. That Yo, we talk about it in the group chat, like, how many how many times he get a shot? Like, we don't count his right. blocks. We count how many times he's been blocked. Right. Because I think, it's like, literally, when you look at his shooting percentage, you really can can attribute a chunk of that to him getting his shot eaten every time he comes down the lane because he cannot lift his arms. So he's not getting the, the kind of lift at least from his upper body, like you can jump somewhere, but if you jump and your arms still aren't fully stretched, I, I don't know. And I, I don't understand why he would want to play through this. Like, like your spot's not in jeopardy. You're the number one pick. If you sit out for a while, you know, it may take longer for you to be incorporated into the offense, into the system, but you're the number one pick. You're going to get your shot regardless. Like, they're not going to Jalil Okra for you. Um, yeah, you point. stuck. You stuck for four years. So maybe, 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 maybe that's what he sees. Right. And then maybe that's what he sees. Like, they can do this to Ja. Like, because here's the thing, right? Here's the thing, right? Jalil Okafor, you know, somebody who could be like the best center in the league at some point. So you're not like, you no, know, but not, listen though, you get minutes. But Jalil Okafor, when he plays, he still can ball. Like they got dudes in front of him that are just not as good as him. He must be a terrible human being or something. Like, <laughs> well, for one, he's a terrible defender, and you know, because I don't like you said, when, you know, when healthy, in the NBA in twenty seventeen, when when healthy, Rashawn Holmes plays ahead of him, but and Rashawn Holmes is all athleticism. I mean, I've seen him step back and hit a three every once in a while, but he has to be super wide open, and you know, he I wouldn't call him a, a shooter by any means. But he plays over Jaleel, and it's just because of the hustle factor, in my opinion. Jaleel is still the one of, if not the most talented offensive player on the team. But what he does yeah. well is kind of antiquated in the league. Like even Joe, Joel Embiid, when we want him to stay down in the post more, we see him floating up top. He's always touching the ball up top, or he's always, you know, up there taking threes and stuff. That's because that's where the league is right now. You get somebody down in the block that got moves, nobody's impressed. I'm impressed, but nobody else is impressed. The coach is definitely impressed. But listen, though, listen, though, before we move, before we get any further, let's get the homie Naj on. Naj wanted to come in and, you know, talk a little trash with us, man. So, uh, uh, Naj, welcome to the war, good brother. What up, yeah, what up? man, Black Protection Union, uh, local nah. 123 calling in. <laughs> How y'all doing? How y'all doing? Pretty yeah, good, man. man. How are you? <laughs> yeah, I think the wind thing went a little off the rails a little earlier, man. I think we got to kind of bring that down a bit. Uh, I, th- I think the comparison to McNabb is actually accurate, though. 
uh, two big, strong guys uh, have problems with accuracy because their mechanics start to get sloppy at times. Uh, McNabb went the infamous worm killer, and uh, Wentz, his balls sail on him at times, especially going deep down the field. So I, I think that there is you know, some love between those two guys. When they're going good, uh, they can look like they're great. Go back to feeling uh, McNabb's good times and read some of the papers uh, when things are going good, as opposed to, you know, what happened with McNabb. It's pretty, you know, everyone's documented. I'm not uh, a, McNabb, a big McNabb guy. Yeah. Notch, can I can I can I ask you a couple questions? Just just two. Um, can you give me three examples of when McNabb led a two minute drive uh, efficiently and effectively for uh, for scoring? <laughs> and I have a yeah, second right. follow up question to that. Yeah, I mean that's that's a, that's no, a no, good no. trap question. No, it's a good trap question. But I'll go to uh, when he was playing with Fred X as one of his receivers, and James Thrash, I believe, is one of the other receivers. Uh, when they got in field goal range to uh, advance in the playoffs. So I, that was a big moment. So, and I, like so, I said, I'm not a big so – hold, hold on, man, because – hold on, because you're throwing uh-huh. off a lot of things that I'm trying to get in real quick. I'm not a big McNabb yes, guy. Sir. I'm stating that. But the thing yeah. with Wentz is we're yeah. really early in the process. We haven't seen a lot of games. And as Philly fans, you all who saw Nick Foles should praise slowly like a jail conversion. Y'all should not be so into – uh, saying this guy with a limited amount of games and small sample size should be crowned. You want to crown him, crown him. But mm-hmm. we got to we got to judge slowly. Like we've seen some really bad plays from this guy as well. Like right now he's going well. He's dissecting defenses. He's really reading uh, things well pre-snap, which is something for a second-year nice, guy nice, you really got nice. to salute. Nice. No, that's Go something. Ahead. That's something Donovan McNabb couldn't do twelve years into his career, and his career only lasted fourteen. So in yeah, the second I, I year, would, I would definitely you, disagree. I, I would say Andy actually reading pre snap for his quarterbacks to a certain degree. Andy's system was so diverse yeah, and true. so kind of well, that's, that's one, two, true. three, that it kind of it made it to where that was your designation. As we see Alex Smith right now, looking like an Alex Smith we've never seen. Look, I'm not trying to trash Wentz. I'm in Atlanta, so I'm not trying to trash Wentz. I think he's a good prospect. If you got the chance to draft him top five, you do it. But there are some far comparisons, and there's some McNabb comparisons in the form of his mechanics get sloppy, and that ball sails on him. Y'all saw the balls last year, and some early on this year, to where it's like, okay, where was he throwing that? Who, who was that too? Like th- that happens as well. But right now, that dude is balling, so you got to celebrate him. But I would just say, pray slowly before we start going through the annals of Philadelphia quarterbacks and putting them up there. Nick Foles is on that list too. Oh, well, that's. Like, don't- Never forget. Awesome. He I'm, had that I'm, season. I'm, that I'm, was not a, I'm not a Nick. I'm actually not a Nick Foles detractor. I don't think Nick Foles was garbage. I think the system fit initially, and then the system didn't fit. I'm much more of a system quarterback, obviously, than than Carson Wentz. But I think in the right, right. system, Nick Foles is a decent NFL starter. I think. In I mean, the right Nick, Foles season, didn't, but, Nick Foles didn't necessarily do anything bad in Philly. I mean, the last time we saw Nick Foles in Philly, like the first, the first, well, the time he was in the playoffs, you know, it was one of those things where he left the field with a lead, and then the special teams and the defense failed us on the last drive against the Saints. To come back into the next season, he wasn't playing to the same clip, but they were six and two when he got hurt. And then everything fell apart, and then we never saw him again. It's one of those things, like Bielsa, it's kind of a system thing. Like Andy Reid used to do this as well. Donovan McNabb would get hurt. He would bring in his backups. And Andy Reid, I, I, I give him credit for being great with quarterbacks. Just like you said, Naj, he has Alex Smith looking like Alex Smith should have been the number one pick at some point when he really shouldn't. Right. <laughs> but Andy kind of makes guys look better than they are. So he would bring in a – uh, uh, damn, what's the dude's name? Um, Hell, Peterson. Hell. Uh, no, <laughs> not, not even Detmer. him. To, damn, what was, not, not even not Detmer, the one that we got Miami for a second round pick for. Um, he came in when. Oh, when yeah. Him. Uh, Feely, Feely, AJ mm. Feely. Yeah, good call. McNabb gets hurt. Good call. AJ Feely basically goes four and one. And and the only reason he lost that one game is because uh, usually reliable David Akers missed a, a, a chip shot against the Giants. And 
like he does such a good job with him. He has teams salivating for, for A.J. Feely the next year. The Dolphins give up a second-round pick, and A.J. Feely goes to their system in an absolute garbage. I think that's like the same thing with like Nick Foles. Like as long as they would have kept him here, he did okay, you know, in that system right before Andy Reid left, and then he did okay with, with Chip Kelly. So I think in those two systems, he was pretty good. You send them somewhere else where the the, the quarterback yeah. coaching isn't the same, then Nick Foles is just another guy, another tall guy <laughs> with a fairly huge right. right. But, but you know, like guys where the roster has to be so good around them, it's like, okay, right. the QB market that you have, you can't keep a guy like that around and then overpay him. Uh, the greatest example of all time is Mark Rippon. When he played with that all-world talent, Mark Rippon looked all-world. And, you know, mm-hmm. we know how Mark Rippon looked the rest of his career. Uh, I don't want to stick on this Wentz thing too much because I know, you know, y'all get sensitive up there. Y'all done turned into us now. Uh, Atlanta Falcons oh, no. fans, you can't say nothing to them now, man. They're real sensitive. Um, no, they're they definitely a contingent of Philly fans that's like that right now. But right now you're actually talking to some <laughs> of the most pessimistic Philly fans you will ever find. Like, oh, I don't well, believe look, I want y'all to buy any in, of the stuff that's going on. I want the hurt on. to hurt bad. So I want y'all to buy in. I want the hurt to hurt bad. I'm an Atlanta Falcons yeah. fan. We're horrible, and I want somebody else to feel pain. It's, it's kind of that kind of pettiness going on right now. So, you know, that that's what's good. But as far as the <laughs> NBA, as a person who's always suspicious of institutions, i got to ask the question, do, was there kind of a, 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 a idea or a mind state from the 76ers front office because they've had so many injury problems that it was they, they kind of wanted him to be the good soldier, and he may, may have felt some pressure. Uh, to suit up and talking about folks and to suit up when he can't lift his arms and he's shooting free throws like Mr. Burns from the Simpsons. Like, you know, there, 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 there could have been some, a little bit of pressure. You know what I mean? Not saying like, you're right directly. though. There could, there definitely could have been pressure because the regime that's in there now isn't really the regime that was so, you know, cool with just letting players rest for a year to get, to get well, you know, that was, that was the Sam Hinkie regime. And, you know, he was like, okay, we'll draft Nerlens Noel, even though we know he's hurt. We'll let him sit out the season. We'll draft uh, Joel Embiid, even though we know he's hurt. Um, uh, ben Simmons was a little yeah, different. But, they didn't but regardless expect him to of, get of regime, hurt. It, if you take on the process and then it looks like, okay, here we go again, another number one guy and he's hurt. Right. You know what I mean? Like the fan base, that might not have played well. So I, I think there could have been some pressure there. Because, yeah, he shouldn't have been out there. I think you guys hit that dead on the head. And I mean, I as far as Lonzo, like, oh, go ahead. No, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. What's up with Lonzo? Yeah, I was going to say, as, as far as Lonzo, yeah, the kid looks phenomenal, uh, extremely high basketball IQ. But like you said, the aggressiveness is a question. Uh, it's to the point to where when he drives, I think guys are going to back off and expect the pass and start to play him for the pass. He's definitely right. going to have to be a more of a threat. But I, I don't think the Lakers are actually pushing for eight seed or anything. I think they're looking towards the future and plan on being bad this year and next year. And y'all Brandon Ingram uh, take was spot on as well. He does not look like what people are uh, trying to make him out to be. He seems like a nice player, but he seems like somebody Lonzo has to set the table for and not, you know, that next Laker great who just happens to be playing with Lonzo. Like, I, I don't see that with, uh, you know, as Brandon intriguing Ingram. as he is as a prospect. Brandon Ingram needs to hang out at Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles a little more. Um, <laughs> I, I, he's so skinny, it just it looks weird. Like, you know, you are an NBA basketball player. And, and like I try, try to tell everybody, like, I don't think he's bad or anything. It's just, I don't know, the height goes a little little, little overboard um, as far as yeah, I'm Yeah, and, and I, got, I got agility questions with him. Like, that's my biggest thing. Like, like y'all said, yeah. everybody tries to make the KD comparison to anybody who has, you know, the, the, the height that you want that can handle the ball and shoot. But I don't see the wiggle. Like, I've seen him get by somebody, yeah. you know, a few times last night, but I just don't see him as a guy who can make people respect the drive to the point of where, you know, he, he's in that, that all-star fringe type of thing. I, like, I don't see that from him. Uh, he's a exactly. good shooter, though, you know, much better than expected. All right. Well, no doubt, Nas. You know, as usual, man, we enjoy your calls. Nas, we Thank appreciate you for your calls. Hopefully, we holler at you next week. Thanks, yeah, bro. And, and, man, y'all got to ease up on the black quarterbacks. You can't look. I, I hate to Cam is not a man. child or immature. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. That's, 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 that's be awesome, that's man. That's be awesome, man. man. Warren Moon is a goat yeah. to me. <laughs> Yo, Cam's nah. Loser, Jimmy man. just threw me under the bus and then took life. my guy. 
Warren, <laughs> Warren Moon, Warren Moon is my Warren Moon and Randall are my two favorite quarterbacks. But I'm oh, I call okay, a spade okay. a spade. I miss. I call I miss a spade a spade. Yeah. Top in my house, the top three quarterbacks of all time are Warren Moon, Randall Cunningham, and Steve McNair. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but but can I get this Jimmy last line? I know I, I know I've taken a lot of time. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. But yeah, the the, me, the media is making a mistake of calling Cam immature, petulant, and all that stuff. No, he's a bad loser. Uh, you got that Michael Jordan thing to where he thinks he's always supposed to win, and at the same time, he's also not the most articulate person. So ain't no telling where that could have gone if he, they would have right. pressed him more and he would have stayed more. Uh, being advised by Frank Lutz, so you take that wherever you want to take it. But the team <laughs> won all those games in high school and college, and he's just not loose to use, uh, used to losing, and he throws a fit when he loses. He is a bad yeah. loser, probably a – Yo, but he uh, acts like know, a – I think he's a roller breaker. I, I, that's why I kind of gave him kind of a pass at the Super Bowl. But I'm like, you know, you lost, and it's like Wednesday after practice, like at some point. It's <laughs> like you got to go over and talk to the media. Like. Yeah, but remember early on, this dude had a towel over his head over regular season games. Like, you know, the world was ending. He's like, nah, dude, you're not at Auburn. You can lose games in the NFL. Okay, hey, this, 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 this is what happens when everybody gets a participation trophy in Little League. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and black quarterbacks, like, just think about this. Post Jameis Winston, because I think that's the line of demarcation. Black quarterbacks are actually going to these academies and a lot of these clubs and getting, you know, the tutelage early on. So you're going to see more good black quarterbacks based on that as opposed to back in the day where guys are running triple option, uh, yeah. getting to college and just reading one side of the field and then getting to the NFL nah. and everybody saying, okay. Yeah, we've always play acknowledged play. that. We definitely nah, did. So, I mean, yeah, that's nah, you, you, as, you touched on those other guys. You, you touched on that. You touched on that beautifully because one of the things I do to rile and anger our brothers and sisters is I say, you know, black quarterbacks ain't ish. But then I go deeper and I say, when you look at high school and college, we are not taught the position the same as white quarterbacks. We're taught to use our agree. athleticism and be a playmaker as opposed to setting the table and running an offense from, from an intellectual standpoint, which makes it unfair. Yeah. Yeah, that quarterback is really tiered as far as what your family can afford and what camps you go to. Now, that's changed now because everybody's going. They're finding five-star kids, you know, in the hood and taking them to some of these camps. So kids are learning route trees, how to understand concepts of passing and everything else. So you'll see everything change. It's, it's about to flip as, as we go forward. But thanks for letting me that's talk to you so much, man. Y'all know I got to pick up, right. man. Appreciate no doubt, man. All right, Nash. Thanks, homie. Yeah. All right. Well, you know, you know, this is the – well, our basketball talk was about, you know, these freaks of nature that we've seen in the league in the past, you know, I say maybe decade, but now it's starting to be like every draft, you're drafting an avatar. Um, we know what Kevin Durant was. We know what LeBron James was. Jimmy, we talked last week about your boy Giannis Antetokounmpo, a.k.a. the Greek freak, um, who is now, after four games, averaging 36.8 points per game, 10.8 rebounds, 5.3 assists, 2.3 steals, 1.3 blocks, is shooting 65.9% from the field because he's not really shooting Jays, but you can't stop him from getting to the rack whenever he wants to, and the Bucks are now 3-1 and one and might be a young force to be reckoned with in this Eastern Conference. Um then you have guys like Ben Simmons, who a lot of people are using the word scary um, for what he can do. For, for all of the tractors, this point guard situation with Ben Simmons seems to be working out so far. He's putting up freak numbers because when a 6'10 dude is coming at you, there's not much you can do. Um, in the ilk of, of, of Giannis, Ben is not really trying to shoot too many jump shots right now. So, so it just makes it that much scarier when he and the Greek freak. What, what's Yo. up with your man Giannis, though, Jimmy? Why, why he averaging well, 20, all, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, and 20? Yo, know, first of all, shout out to Oscar, shout out to Oscar Alcindor because that's what I call the ball. Um, and I'm not just making that up because of the two great bucks because the actual Milwaukee Bucks run a commercial where they, like, phase – Kareem's face and Oscar's face, and then they show like Giannis. So 
I, I, I took that from their marketing department, man. And, like, and, and the funny thing is, you'd be like, number 33 plus number one is number 34, because that was Kareem's number, Oscar's number, and Giannis is 34. So they're trying to say the ball is a combination. But I'll tell you one thing. I've never seen anything like this. The closest thing I think I've seen, and this is just watching highlights in terms of someone being able to get to the rack whenever they damn well feel like it, is literally Wilt Chamberlain. Like, Wilt couldn't shoot from a distance either. Wilt was so strong and so, like, athletic in that era that he got to the rack whenever he feels like it. And this is kind of what Giannis does. Like, you know, he just gets to the rack whenever he feels like. He's stronger than everybody. He's faster than everybody. He jumps higher than everybody. Um, and he has a high basketball IQ. He gets assists. He, I mean, this dude is just, like, easy to watch him play. And we talked about it a little bit last season. Beginning of the season, I was like, yo, if he ain't better than big, he's the closest one because he's going to be the best player in the league if he's not already the best player in the league. Yeah. It's, 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 it's crazy to see his ascension, like, and as quickly as it's, as it's gone. Um, that dude is scary, man. And, you know, I'm not even one of these dudes who, who totally subscribe to the, 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 the new way of basketball. Like, I think a serviceable jump shot from him and from he and Ben Simmons would be enough. Like, I don't need those guys out there launching threes all day like everybody else because when you can get to the rack at will, then what's the point of not putting that pressure Yo, 80, on defense 80, and going to the rack 85%, at will? 85% of people in the Hall of Fame can't shoot. But, yo, we definitely got to get out of here, though, yo. Um, mm-hmm. So we'll keep this conversation next week, man. I want to say uh, thank you, brothers hey, and sisters, for joining us tonight. This is briefing in the war room. <laughs> Not to everybody in the chat room, Facebook, Twitter, everybody everywhere online at Holidays. We appreciate it. Those we couldn't get to on the phone, we apologize. Hit us up next week. Listen, tune in next week. We're going to talk more hoops. We're going to talk more NFL. Um, everything we do during the course of the week can be found at warroomsports.com. That's our webcast. That's our podcast. That's the podcast network. You can also get my book there, Sports the Book, right at warroomsports.com. That is the hub, so check us there. So until next time, everybody, don't accept mediocrity. Be steadfast in the war against ignorance, and we'll see you chumps on top. Yo, every Thursday, 6 to 8, they do this. <sighs> Shout out to Dez, PJ, Be Austin, Doc Bay on replay. Uh, WarRoomSports.com. Get that mobile app. If not dial, call it 323 working double O12. They be going and you sensitive, then oh well. Yeah. Physical podcast, let's talk sports. Uh, Showtime like magic in the block push. Magic looking alive, push one to join in. Rip your team or listen for your enjoyment. Hip hop dollars, pit stop and knowledge. Uh, Should be in sports credits, I ain't talking college. Five guys, no beef though. Sports thrift, beef thrift, but the streets know. Bellafani, I got a G flow. Uh, KC, royalty, I'm in beef mode. Two hours. Get your game up. Uh, who's the best in sports cast? You better name us. What real sports? War Room Sports, www.warroomsports.com. What? Ain't no more to it.